Hi, I'm Ryan Samaski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we've got another installment in our dry dock series. Hopefully, this video will help you out if you have your own battleship at home. When some representatives from the shipyard came to look at the ship, they asked about the locks that keep the propellers from spinning. The propellers are hooked directly to the engine via propeller shaft. So if something causes the propellers to spin, the shaft will spin and the engine will spin. And the Navy, and when the Navy sealed the ship up with preservatives, they didn't intend for the engine to spin anymore. So we know that the shafts were locked in some way. Normally you would do that with the jacking gear, but as far as we could tell, the jacking gear was not engaged. So we knew there was supposed to be another lock somewhere along the length of the shaft. Well, propeller shaft number one that we're standing next to here is 350 feet long. So where along that length was the lock going to be? And what exactly does a propeller shaft lock look like? Well, I took these guys down as deep in the ship as you could go back in the shaft alleys for propeller shaft number one, which is where I guessed they should be. Uh, we, we checked aft diesel and the shaft alleys. Those are the two places where all four propeller shafts are. And we didn't find them. But they took my word for it that the shafts were locked, that uh, we haven't noticed the engine spinning even though the tide comes in and out and everything else. Uh, so they must be locked. Well, one of my coworkers finally found the shaft locks. And the reason we couldn't find them is because they're in multiple different places. Right now, we are in fire room number four. This is the uh, fire room associated with engine room number four, home of main engine number three. This is the fire room that has boilers number seven and eight in it. It also has propeller shafts one, two, and four passing through it. So we were able to find the locks for propeller shafts one and four. Those are the two outboard shafts, the two that had the longest run, the ones that are fed from engine rooms one and two. And this right here is the lock. So you can see from up here, there should be a piece that hangs down and covers this coupling. That's been removed and they've welded in this L bracket in its place and just bolted in this piece of, uh, I don't know if it's 3 8 or, or uh, half inch thick steel. And it comes down here and it's drilled so that the regular coupling bolts could just be undone and then done back in. And this holds it in place. Well, actually, there's the uh, piece that has been removed that should be covering this if this wasn't in place. Huh. That's cool. This nut is actually stenciled with USS NJ PC3. All of these seem to say uh, PC3. It could be propeller coupling three. I hate acronyms. Anyway, um, looks like they did not want to lose these nuts if they ever had to take them off to change the shafts. Uh, for those of you who don't uh, remember the couplings from previous videos that we've done, because propeller shaft number one in particular is so long, uh, it is not one solid 350 foot long propeller shaft. It comes in sections. I think number one is seven sections long. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but in theory, if we take damage, uh, let's say the, the shaft breaks right here, they can unbolt it there and essentially pull all of this out the back end of the ship and feed new shaft right up the, the line to reattach here. I'm pretty sure that uh, during Halsey's typhoon in December 44, Iowa bent one of her propeller shafts, and so she had to go into dry dock. I believe that was the first time an Iowa-class battleship went into a floating dry dock, and I've got no evidence that New Jersey ever went into a floating dry dock. Uh, so cool that they got to do that. Um, so they would have had to pull the propeller shaft out the back of the ship manufacture new ones of these or ship these out from the United States and uh, reinstall them. So one of those little things that the Navy has plans for, well, what if this gets damaged? What if that gets damaged? How do we fix it? We're, we're deep in the armored citadel of the ship. We can't crane this out of here. In some ways, the 
Outboard shafts were the hardest to find because they were the longest. Their coupling could have, or, or their lock could have been anywhere during the, the whole length of this shaft. Um, now that we know that they're at couplings, that really helped us narrow down where the ones for shafts three and four were. We could assume where the locks for shafts two and three were. We can assume they're gonna be in the same compartment because one and four were in the same room. So the inboard ones are probably more or less in the same place. And fortunately, because those are the short shafts, they have the least amount of coupling. It essentially means that they have to be somewhere in the shaft alleys. So we're gonna go there and check next. So now we're at one of the inboard shafts. This is number three, which is fed from engine room number four. It is the inboard one on the port side of the ship, which is the left hand inboard one if you're looking at it from behind. And you can see that right here, they have welded in a very similar bracket. It looks like there was something welded here previously and you can tell where they've ground off the original layers of paint and then repainted it so it doesn't corrode. Uh, you'll, you'll notice there's a lot of condensate in this space. We are below the water, there, there is a temperature change here. But just like the other one, big thick metal plate comes over and is held in place by the bolts. So the shafts are locked in place. So you, you might ask, with nuts that big, what size wrench do you use to loosen them and, and attach them? Well, they left it right down here in the bilge. Look at this. It's even got an enlarged section on the base so that you can whack it with a maul or a hammer to help break it free for that first turn or lock it in with the, the last little bit. That is a battleship sized wrench. I'm fairly certain we're all the way forward in the shaft alleys and on the other side of that bearing is uh, the aft diesel. The only space in the ship where all four propellers come through the same room and my first guess of where it should be. Uh, that said, when we started looking at where these couplings should be, specifically for shaft three, the shortest one, uh, we, we knew that that's how we would find where one of these would be when we knew what the locks were supposed to look like. In one of our previous dry docking videos, we showed you the pipes that lock the rudders in place. Now we've showed you how the propellers are locked in place, so nothing at all that should not move will move when we move the uh, ship for dry docking. What are some things you would like to see in future videos? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum and our major upcoming dry docking project. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and the channel. Thanks for watching.